OK, so we're going to test our intuition about bijections by looking at this sort of problem here, where if you've got two functions, f and g, if their composition is a bijection, does this mean that f and g themselves have to be bijections? Is it possible that they're not? We'll just start off with some definitions. So you've got a function h going from a set a into its codomain, this set b. So we'll start off with a definition of h being 1 to 1. This basically means that if you've got two elements, a1, and a2 in A, and they give you the same output, this must mean that actually they're the same element. So essentially, you can't have two elements in A which map to the same element in B, otherwise it wouldn't be one to one. And then we need another definition which is that H is onto, or surjective. So this just means that basically every point, every element B in the set B, there exists some element a in the domain a, so that h of a equals b. So you can always find an element a which maps to an element b in b. So you can always fill up your codomain with h of a at some point in a. And then you have a bijection. h is bijective if it's one to one and it's onto. So your kind of intuitive picture for this. Imagine you've got your set A here and you've got your set B here. Basically every point in A goes to a unique point in B. Then you can't have any sort of leftover points in B that aren't filled up. So your intuitive picture looks just like this for a bijection. And some examples, say you've got H mapping from the reals to the reals. So you had H of X where all X was equal to 2X plus 1. This would work because each x maps to a unique point, and then you can also sort of fill up your codomain so you can get any real number as an output, so that's great. But then something that wouldn't work, say you had hx equals x squared, this wouldn't be a bijection because you can't fill up, you can't get every single real number out, but then also you've got different points in the reals will map to the same point in the reals. So for example, 1 and minus 1, when you square those, you get the same output. So you've got an example of a bijection and something that's not a bijection. And this is our sort of intuitive picture here where H is mapping from A to B. And if we try to extend our intuition to this composition now, so composing G and F, it's perhaps it's not unreasonable to think it's going to look quite similar. So for every unique point in X, you go to a unique point in Z and you fill up Z. And it's not unreasonable to think sort of along the way, well, we must have this same sort of structure going on. But f will look the same and be a bijection, and so will g. However, it turns out that this isn't quite right, so this intuitive picture doesn't quite work for compositions of bijections. We'll have a look at some examples now to illustrate this. So for our first example, we've got the function f, which is mapping from the reals into a higher dimensional space, where you basically take your real number and then you have this number followed by lots of zeros. It's kind of putting it onto the x-axis in your n-dimensional Euclidean space. And then our function g here is kind of going in reverse, but it's sort of a projection map, which is taking any point in r to the n and mapping that just to whatever its x1 coordinate is. So your sort of x coordinate, your first coordinate entry comes out there. So let's just check, is the composition of g and f a bijection? Well, g composed with f this is going from R into R, so it's mapping from the reals to the reals. And what happens if you have G of F of X? Well, this is equal to G of X followed by lots of zeros. Then we don't really care about those zeros because all that happens when we apply G to this then is it just goes back to X. So what we're saying here is that the composition of G and F. This is just the identity map going from the reals to the reals. So this is definitely a bijection. So every real number has a unique output and we certainly fill the space up. However, F and G, it's quite clear to see that these aren't bijections. So F, for start, this one isn't onto because it doesn't even come close to filling up this space. There's loads of points where you don't have lots of zeros in your coordinate entries. So F isn't onto. And G certainly isn't one-to-one -one because there's loads of different points that you could put in that would give you the same output. 
So kind of what's going on pictorially here then is, imagine we've got our first set X, which is the reals, we've got a few points in there, and then we're kind of going into a bigger space, Y, with our first function. And we don't fill up this bigger space, we only map with F into a very small sort of fraction of this. And then when we go into Z, we are kind of following along each of these goes to a unique output. So you've got sort of F composed with G does give you a bijection. However, G is many to one, so it's not one to one. You've got lots of points which give the same output. You apply G. So you can see here F is not onto, it's not filling up the sort of codomain there, and G is certainly not one to one, it's actually many to one. However, F composed with G is a bijection. So have a look at another example. So in this example, once again, we've got F is going from a sort of small set into a slightly larger set, and then G is going from a larger set back into a slightly smaller set. So here, F takes in a non-negative real number and gives as your output its square root, but the codomain is actually all of the reals, so it doesn't fill these up. So F certainly isn't a bijection because it's not onto. And here, G is mapping now from the real numbers to the non-negative reals just raising a number to the power of 4. So hopefully you can see here, like for example, 2 and minus 2, these give you the same output. So G isn't 1 to 1, so it's certainly not a bijection. So neither F nor G are bijections, but when you do the composition, so G composed with F, this goes from the non-negative reals to the non-negative reals. And it's not too difficult to check this against the definition. We've got G of F of X, the composition of G and F at this point X. This is just equal to x squared. And you can check against the definition that this is 1 to 1 and that it's onto. So once again we've got a bijection but f and g themselves aren't bijections. We're starting to see a bit of a pattern here in the structure though because f is a 1 to 1 function. It's just we have this problem that it doesn't actually fill up its codomain. So here you've got x and then f maps into y. And then once again y is onto, so it does fill up this new set z, however it's not one to one because you've got multiple elements in y which map to the same element in z. So I'll have a look at the more general theory in a sec, that f, perhaps f has to be one to one but it doesn't have to be onto, and g, which maps from y into z, has to be onto but it doesn't necessarily have to be one to one. So let's have a go at proving, first of all, that if G composed of F is a bijection, then this means that F has to be one to one, and later we'll prove that G has to be onto as well. So our proof for claim one, we'll start off just with the definition. G composed F is a bijection, so this means that G composed F is one to one. And then this tells you that essentially for all X1 and X2 in your set X, if g composed with f of x1 is equal to g composed with f at x2, then because it's 1 to 1, this implies that x1 has to be equal to x2. So we know this because g composed of f is 1 to 1. Then let's try and use this to show that f is 1 to 1. So let's suppose you've got x1 and x2 in x, and you suppose as well that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. So basically here we want to show that this implies x1 equals x2. This is pretty straightforward to do because you know that f of x1 equals f of x2 and then if you apply g to both of these because these two are equal this implies that g of f of x1 is equal to g of f of x2, but then we already know that if g of f of x1 equals g of f of x2, this tells you that x1 and x2 have to be equal. So this implies that x1 equals x2, which is what we were trying to show there. So you can conclude then that f is indeed 1 to 1 when the composition g of f is a bijection. So now let's prove that G is onto whenever G composed of F is a bijection. For this proof, again, we're going to start just with the definition. 
So if you remember that G composed with F is a bijection, this means that G composed with F, importantly, is onto. So this tells you that for all Z in the codomain of this composition, Z, there exists a member X in its domain X, such that G composed of F, so G of F of X, equals Z. So you can always find a value X so that G composed of F of X gets you this Z in your set Z. But we can write this slightly differently now. If you imagine, instead of saying there's an X in X so that G of F of X equals Z, why don't we rephrase this? So instead of saying X, there's actually, there's an F of X, which is now a member of Y. So still, for all Z and Z, but now there exists certainly some image f of x of this point, and this is in y, such that g f of x equals z. And this is quite interesting now, because you can take your f of x, instead of writing it as f of x, why don't we just write this as y? So let's rewrite this, and what does this tell us? So for all z in z, there exists y in y, such that g of y equals z. And this is brilliant because this is just the definition of G being onto. G maps from Y to Z. For all members Z and Z, you can find a Y so that G maps to that. So you can conclude, therefore, G is onto. So we've shown that F is one to one, G is onto, but it's not necessarily the case that F is onto, and it's not necessarily the case that G is one to one. However, I'll show you with our sort of intuitive picture that we've seen. So here we've got X, and then here we've got Y. A slightly bigger set, and then we've got Z, kind of final codomain. So our intuitive picture was that you would go basically from X into Y, and this would be a bijection, and then you would have another bijection for G going from Y into Z. However, the problem is that you can actually have other elements in Y that don't get mapped to by F, and you can also have these elements now cause a problem when they go into Z because G is no longer one-to-one. -one. So our sort of intuitive picture was it was almost right, it just wasn't quite the complete picture. But there's a way of sort of adapting this. You can make a few tweaks to F and G so that this picture does sort of represent what's going on. So if you imagine here, instead of having F mapping from X to Y, you could have F mapping from X to its range which is just sort of cheating, but you could change it so that you have this, and now f would be onto, sort of, just by design there. And then you could change g, so I've put a hat on them because they're slightly different functions now. So instead of going from y, you could restrict the domain to f of x, and map this into z, and then you can show that actually both of these functions will be bijections. And here, your g hat, if you prefer the more formal notation, you can write this as g restricted to domain f of x.